podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. A new Elon University poll shows that a majority of North Carolinians surveyed support an amendment to the state constitution that would make all public business of any government body in the state open and available to the public. 81% of the people polled February 20th through 24th would support or strongly support such an amendment. 73% of the respondents say they believe access to public documents, records, information and meetings influences government operations. The Elon University poll was conducted as part of the Sunshine Week activities happening across North Carolina this week. Rick Willis, the president of the North Carolina Open Government Coalition, recently stopped by our studios to talk more about Sunshine Week. Rick Willis, welcome back to North Carolina Now. Thank you very much, Mitch. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, you are the president of the North Carolina Open Government Coalition. What is the mission of your organization? It's very simple. We want to guarantee access to the public to all governmental meetings and records that pertain to the activity of the government. Now, the coalition focuses on what are called North Carolina sunshine laws. Mm -hmm. What are these laws and why should citizens even be interested in these laws? Well, it's all about the public business and the tax money that you give to the government every year. How is this money being spent and how is the government using that money? The decisions that are made really at the local level are the ones that are most important. The city council, the county commission. There's a lot of media focus on the legislature in Raleigh and what's going on with the state budget these days. But how much do we really know about what's happening with our own county and city budgets? What we want to make sure is that people understand those records are accessible. If they want to know how their taxpayer money is being spent, they have the right to go to the meetings, listen to what's being said, hear the rationale behind the decisions, and to see the documents on how the money was spent. When it comes to the media being involved in having open access and transparency as far as governmental records are concerned, have you seen this become more of a challenge or is, is it becoming more accessible to the media? Yes and no. Uh, North Carolina won a major victory last summer. The legislature passed a brand new state personnel act. Previously, uh, the only records that were available to North Carolinians about their public employees were the name, position, and salary of a public employee. Now, with this new law, if this employee has been disciplined or fired, the public that paid this individual's salary now has the right to see why. And this is brand new. Now, that's the positive news. The negative news is that some state agencies not state agencies necessarily, but local government entities are, find, are trying to find ways to get around the law. And I'll give you an example. The Lincoln County Sheriff's D Department fired an employee. The Charlotte Observer requested the documentation on the dismissal of this employee under the new state personnel law. The response they got was the dismissal was verbal and there are no documents. So that kind of thing continues to be a challenge. What I'm hoping is is that we can all get under the same tent and we all understand the importance of this and we can all start generating the documents that should be generated and giving the public access to those. Now this is Sunshine Week and there are some events going on. First of all, explain the purpose of Sunshine Week and some of the events that you have going on to observe this week. Well, Sunshine Week is in effect an effort to draw attention to the open meetings law and public records law across the country. And we are celebrating it in a, a, a unique way. We are celebrating Sunshine Day on March 17th in Salisbury at the historic train depot. We have uh, an afternoon of workshops. We're going to start at 12 noon with a keynote address from the new president of the Consolidated University of North Carolina system, Tom Ross. And then we're going to have workshops on state personnel records. And uh, we're also going to have a workshop on the uh, access to records from universities. Uh, we're all aware of the issues that the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill had with its football team. And I will share with you that it has been difficult at times to get records that we believe should be open and public, but that the university has decided falls under a federal law that pr protects educational records of students. So there are still those debates about 
what is and isn't a public record despite the law. And now you touched on something that I wanted to follow up on because as, as your organization looks through some of these open records laws and, and things of that nature, what do you as a coalition expect from government agencies as well as some of the, the public agencies that receive tax dollars? Bottom line, I want to make sure that the public has access to open meetings, a seat at the table, and that they're inside the meeting as opposed to being on the other side of a closed door. Ultimately, that's what we're looking for. And in the abstract, it's hard to argue that point. You're trying to educate the public on, on public records, open access. What about at the lower level, starting with the students in the classrooms? Are there any programs available for them? Oh, absolutely. Uh, first of all, I want to send people to our website, which is ncopengov.org, ncopengov.org. They're going to find a wealth of information there about open government laws, public meeting laws. Uh, they'll find educational materials there. And I want to give special thanks to the folks at Elon University for the work that they've done. The students in their communications department have put together a video that's an educational video that was distributed to classrooms. And there's also a pamphlet that describes in layman's terms what the open meetings law and public records law are in our state. Not to put you on the spot here, but if you would look at any major issue as it relates to open government, what is the biggest issue you feel that's facing North Carolina right now? You know, I think that uh, it really does have to get back to that state personnel records law that we discussed briefly and making sure that even the state attorney general's own interpretation of the law is followed. Uh, I mentioned briefly about the Lincoln County Sheriff's Department, but the State Sheriff's Association has gone back to see if there might be yet another interpretation other than the one that the uh, Attorney General's office put out when they said it applies to uh, retroactively to all state personnel records and these documents should be available and should be released. I'd like to see us all get to the same place on that. And looking at the legislature, is there anything in the legislature that's being looked at as far as open meetings and public records right now? State Representative Stephen LaRoche from Lenore has introduced a bill that would codify the open meetings and public records law as a state constitutional amendment. Now, we already have statutes and laws, but to make it a constitutional amendment not only gives it greater weight, but if the legislature for some reason wanted to make exceptions to the public records law, if it was an amendment, they would have to get a three-fifths majority to do so. So I think that would be a great thing to have in our state. And once again, if people want to find out more of, about public records, knowing what's going on in government, finding out more about the coalition, where do they need to go? ncopengov.org. Rick Willis, president of the North Carolina Open Government Associate, well, coalition, thank you so very much for stopping by and sharing your information with us. Mitch, it was a pleasure. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.